Hey guys, it's Jeff from Press Your Luck, and it's hard to believe that I've been doing this for over four years now, just over four years. I hit that benchmark, and it's kind of surreal. And it doesn't feel that long because I truly, absolutely love doing this. Love it. Now, what's surprising is in this four years, and all the hundreds and hundreds of recipes I put out in that time, I never had a beef stew recipe. Isn't that just nutty? That's batty, isn't it? So I said, finally, I have to do one of these already. It's so cold out. It's like the winter that Antarctica sent us, and it's nonstop. So I'm finally like, I need to make a beef stew with all the shoveling that I'm doing out there. I need some fuel. But I said, if I'm going to do a beef stew, it has to be full of those rich, deep, pressure luck flavors that many of you have come back for. And I'm going to be giving you guys a beef stew that's going to deliver exactly that. No beef stew where it's like super bland and it just has meat floating around with a few veggies in there. I'm talking we're going to be doing this up deluxe. So let's go right to the Instant Pot and make the easiest, best beef stew you've ever slurped. Let's go. So a great flavor base to any recipe are onions. And I'm going to take two medium or you can use one large yellow onion and I'm gonna dice that up. Now from a bunch of celery, I'm gonna just take two of the ribs here and dice that up as well. And true story, I actually can't stand celery on its own, but I love it when it's cooked and softens up. And also, you see these leafy tops from our bunch of celery? Let's reserve these green leaves. You see this part, especially in the middle? All of this good stuff right here, rip them off and we're gonna reserve all of these for later. A pound of baby red potatoes, or you could do baby white, or you could do a mix of the two, just make sure it's one pound. Take those there, rinse them, and slice them in half just like that. It also wouldn't be beef stew without some carrots. I'm gonna take a 16 ounce bag of this baby carrots, really cheap, usually these are like 99 cents in markets, I love that. And I've halved each carrot just by slicing each one down the center like that. And the final step of our prep is focusing on our meat, of course. Now, some people with their beef stew like to just use like beef stew meat and that's completely fine. You can totally do that. It's already cut up for you usually. Just make sure you find marble pieces. However, I like to use a nice marbled chuck roast. I'm using three pounds of it and I'm going to cut this up and then dice it into bite-sized chunks. And there we go, nice and sliced up into bite-sized chunks, generous sized bite-sized chunks. And when I say the meat should be marbled, I mean that exactly. You see this fat stranding through each piece? That's what we want here, as much as that is possible. Not too thick on the fat, but just the right amount. Because what happens is, once that cooks, the fat begins to melt into the stew, creating the richest, most amazing flavor. Also, the beef is gonna cook down. So make sure you get a nice piece like this. And I always get my chuck roast from Costco. They have, in my opinion, the best cuts. All right, now let's stay on our meat and season it. I'm gonna season this up with two teaspoons each of garlic salt and black pepper, as well as one teaspoon each of Italian seasoning, garlic powder, and onion powder. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that on top. And then I'm gonna get in there with my clean hands and I'm just gonna mix everything up so everything's coated in my seasonings. And I'm just gonna keep mixing this up by hand until all of my beef is lightly coated with the seasonings. It's not gonna be terribly coated because we don't have a ton in there. You don't want to overdo it. All right, and there we go. And now we're going to move on to the pot. Now let's go to the Instant Pot and we're going to add in a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. And now let's get that heated up. So we'll come to the control panel, we'll hit the saute button and make sure we're on the more or the high setting. All right, so after three minutes of our oil heating up, I'm going to add in my onion and celery. And this is optional, but I like to add mushrooms to my beef stew. You don't have to add them if you don't like mushrooms eight ounces of a sliced baby bella or white mushroom. And I'm gonna saute everything in here for about three to five minutes until all the veggies soften and cook down a little bit. All right, and after about three minutes or so of sauteing our veggies, I'm gonna add in three cloves of crushed or pressed or minced garlic. It's about a tablespoon worth. And we'll stir that around in the pot for another minute. All right, now I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, the W sauce, and then as the Worcestershire sauce is in there, just make sure that we get any of the brown bits up by deglazing. Worcestershire sauce is like a miracle when it comes down to getting any brown bits up in the bottom of the Instant Pot or really anything stainless steel. Same for wine, by the way. Okay, now we're looking really nice. We're gonna move on to our meat. Let's add all of our beef stew meat or chuck meat in here. And then just mix it around until it just becomes lightly browned on the edges. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, no big sear. It's all gonna get pressure cooked. All right, and after about three minutes of doing this, you see how the edges of the beef are just like this? That's all I want. Just a very, very light browning on the edges. 
I want to add in a quarter of a cup of all-purpose flour. And then just stir that in very quickly to coat all of our beef. I'm going to have to get a little bit of arm power in here because the beef is not the lightest thing to stir around in a pot. All right, and that is exactly what I'm going for. Now I'm going to add in one cup of a dry red wine, like a Pinot Noir or a Cabernet Sauvignon, and four cups of a low sodium beef broth is what I'm adding. If you don't want to add the wine, add five cups of beef broth. It's as simple as that, but the wine does add some wonderful, deep, rich flavor to this. Now I'm gonna add in one teaspoon each of dried rosemary and dried thyme, as well as one tablespoon of a light or dark brown sugar. Give this a good stir. I'm also gonna add in two bay leaves and just press them down like that. And now I'm gonna top it off with my carrots and potatoes. I'm not gonna stir them in, I'm just gonna lay them right on top, just like that. We already have a lot going on in there and I'm just gonna kinda just smooth them out. And that's all we need to do, y'all. That is it. I don't know all of a sudden why I became Southern. Maybe because I'm with a Southerner, maybe that's why. In any case, we're ready to pressure cook. I'm gonna secure my lid, make sure that I'm in the sealing position. Now let's come back to the control panel, hit the cancel or the keep warm slash cancel button depending on your model. Sometimes I share the button and hit the pressure cooker manual button also depending on your model. And we're gonna go for 20 minutes at high pressure and that's it. Adjust with the plus or minus buttons. If you have a knob, turn the knob to get there and then hit the start button if you have a knob. If you don't have a knob, it's gonna start after a few seconds of not touching anything like it just did. And when it says on, that means it's building pressure. Once it builds pressure and the pin pops up, that's when it's gonna begin counting down from the time we set it for. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're going to allow a 10 minute natural release, meaning we do nothing for 10 minutes. We're gonna let this count up to 10, and then we're gonna finish it off with a quick release. And now that 10 minutes of a natural release have passed, we'll finish it off with a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so let's take the lid off. And here's our beef stew so far, looking great. Mm. We just have some finishing touches to put on here, very simple ones, and then it's gonna be all ready to go. Look at how tender this is, the beef. Already I can just tell, it smells amazing. First thing, feel free to fish out the bay leaves. I wanna take a six ounce can of tomato paste, and the easiest way to get this out is to take a can opener and get both ends off. And just take a spoon and press it right through, and look at that, it goes right in. And then you can just scoop out any remaining paste on the sides of the can, add it to the pot, and then stir until it's melted into the stew. And now let's take our reserves of leafy tops from our celery here, and then we're gonna stir that in. Okay, and now my final ingredient, which is optional, is a one ounce packet of au jus seasoning in here. This stuff, in my opinion, gives it a nice final touch. And we're gonna stir that in there, and that's gonna give it a final flavor bomb. Uh, again, optional, you don't have to add it at all. It'll cut down some of the sodium if you don't, although it will not make it overly salty, I promise. Um, all right guys, so now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we let this set for about 10 minutes before serving, because once we pressure cook something, liquid gets very thin. The hotter the liquid gets, the thinner it gets. But when it comes down a little bit from that heat and it gets to a normal temperature, in terms of it still being plenty hot and warm, but not to the point where it's gonna burn your mouth, that's when things start to thicken and come together. So give it 10 minutes, it's worth the time. In that time you could walk the dog, you could fold some laundry, drink some wine that you just opened to make this, whatever. In 10 minutes we're gonna come back and we're gonna serve this up. And now after 10 minutes of letting it rest, here's our beef stew. We have potatoes, we have carrots, we have beef. We have an unbelievably unforgettable rich broth that's in here and just wait until we try it out. So now take a ladle and bowl it up. Okay, here we go. This is loaded with beef. And there we have it. Beef stew. And there it is. Oh, and don't forget, some delicious crusty bread, whether it be garlic, cheese toast, or just plain French. Just make sure it's nice and crusty. Let's try it out. All right, guys, and there's my beef stew and a golden spoon because the gold standard of beef stew needs a golden spoon. Let's try this out. Here we go. Too often, I, oh my. Now, too often I've had a beef stew where there's plenty of beef in there and plenty of veggies, but it tastes like dishwater. There's no flavor. That's the opposite of what this is. It is full of rich and unbelievable flavor. The meat is literally melting your mouth tender. It's a big chunk here, but melting, melting. Like the Wicked Witch of the West. What a world, what a stew.
The potatoes are cooked to perfection. They're just also melting as well as the carrots. Mmm, perfect. And the broth, the stew itself, full of such unbelievably rich and deep flavor. Now you can totally not add that final packet at the end if you don't want to, the au jus, it's up to you. It's not gonna make it overly salty, I promise you this. But then again, everyone's taste buds are different. So I've had people tell me that certain things are very salty to them, when to me they're not at all, and I hate over salted food. So that's up to you. Do that if you wish. If that's not your thing, you could always just add a little more seasoned salt or something. Ugh, and now let's try this bread out in there. Dip the bread in. I can't. I can't. I mean, this is insane. The only thing better than this beef stew is dipping a slice of crusty, cheesy garlic bread in it. Ah, the consistency. It's not too thin, it's not too thick. It's Goldilocks, just right. The carrots, literally just melting in my mouth. Same with the potatoes, but they're still holding their form so nicely. And again, this look at this meat. Okay, look at it. Do you see it? Do you see how tender this is? I mean, this is tender meat. I mean, it's gonna like shred apart almost. I mean, I'm in foodie ecstasy here. If you're a meat lover, and if you love beef stew, try this recipe. It's almost kind of reminiscent of my pot roast, except it's a stew versus more of a gravy, like what the pot roast would give you. This is on another level delicious. Guys, if you enjoyed this recipe, check out PressureLocooking.com because I have tons of recipes there. I also have plenty of videos just like this one on each recipe, telling you to do exactly what to do step by step so there's no guesswork. I take all the guesswork out of the equation. I wrote a cookbook, the Step by Step Instant Pot Cookbook. It's an international bestseller, a number one bestseller as well. It has over 750 beautiful color photos giving you step-by-step -step instructions of every single recipe with a finished shot of each and every one, all in beautiful color. And uh, follow me at uh, Pressure Love Cooking on Facebook. Definitely like the page to make sure you get updates on deals, items, tips, things like that. And at Pressure Love Cooking on Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, and now TikTok. I mean, I have to start using the TikTok, right? Everyone's using that. Thank you so much again, guys. And uh, if you love beef stew, boy, have I got the recipe for you. Enjoy. <laughs>